This is the Rain Vortex, located in the best airport in the world. Time for us to leave Hong Kong and fly over to Singapore to check out the stunning waterfall in person. Just landed at Changi Airport in Singapore. We're waiting in line to take the bus to the Jewel. There's actually a pretty long line at the moment, but it's moving pretty quickly. We'll see you there. We made it to the Jewel. It is currently 87 degrees, and I don't know what the humidity is, but I'm still wearing my jacket and jeans from earlier. So I'm about to get changed. We're gonna store our luggage somewhere and then walk around the Jewel uh, until it's time to check into our hotel. First things first, getting some food in our system was priority. We went to the baggage storage area where we dropped off our luggage and paid $18 for it to be stored for three hours. Our first meal in Singapore was from Sop Sop Thai. We ordered an iced tea red soda and regular Thai iced tea to go along with our fried chicken wings with choice of spicy and original sauce. The crispy chicken noodle dish came with a side of fried fish and fried beef balls and broth to dunk the noodles in. Nancy also ordered one of her favorites, mango with sticky rice. We made the mistake of eating at the first place that caught our eye, not knowing there was another food court on a lower level. Don't get me wrong, our food from Sop Sop Thai was very good. We just didn't know there were over 100 dining options at the Jewel. Home to the largest indoor waterfall, the Jewel Changi Airport has been named the world's best airport and it's no surprise why. Opening its doors in 2019, it is home to 300 shopping and dining establishments spread throughout its 10-story facility. The indoor garden surrounds a breathtaking waterfall and receives about 300,000 visitors per day. It's no wonder why people travel near and far just to spend their day at this airport. Citadine Connect City Center Hotel was our home for the next four days. The hotel is conveniently located near Orchard Road and an MRT station, which is Singapore's subway system, to help us get around. The hotel strongly advises guests not to bring back fruits such as durian or mangosteen or else there will be a hefty fine. We walked over to the mall by our hotel to grab dinner at a Japanese restaurant, Gochi So Shakudo. This sour plum drink caught me by surprise and was way more sour than I could handle. I ordered the curry rice that came with pork, oyster, shrimp, and cheese katsu. Nancy ordered what looked like to be her own personal hot pot with a side of pork katsu. I guess it's pretty popular because I saw many other patrons order this. We ended the night with a fresh coconut shake from Mr. Coconut. I'm usually not the biggest fan of coconut, but this is a must try if you're ever in Singapore. Day two in Singapore. So today's actually the first day I'm wearing tank tops and shorts because it's actually really hot here. It says this feels like 92 degrees with 80% humidity. It said it was supposed to have scattered thunderstorms throughout the day, but it looks really nice right now. As you can see, it's really sunny. Nancy and I are walking over to get some money exchanged, just in case the smaller food stalls don't take credit card and only take cash. But I don't see it being more than five to $10 each stall. Currently at Orchard Gateway, which is just a 10 minute walk away from our hotel. This mall is really nice and it's Tuesday afternoon and it is packed. There's a lot of food stalls and food choices to pick from and also a lot of shopping to do. Just picked up our MRT card from the ticket office. 
So there is a $5 non-refundable charge basically for the card and then there's another $5 value added on so the total costs $10 per card. These ticket office can be found at most or every MRT station before you enter. There's also recharge stations that we're walking to right now. Maxwell Food Center, located in Chinatown, was our first hawker center experience. There are more than 100 food stalls serving a variety of different cuisines. The only problem is deciding on a place to eat. The dishes are super affordable, most ranging from $2 to $6. If you're having a really difficult time picking, look for the stalls with long lines. Currently at Maxwell Food Court, and we're waiting in line for the famous Tan Tan High Niece Chicken. And the line is pretty long. It goes from, it wraps around from the inside corner all the way to outside. Uh, you can see behind me. But it's moving fairly quickly and we're really excited to try it. This was the longest line inside the entire center. They even had a picture of the late Anthony Bourdain raving about their chicken. It might not look like much, but for less than $5, we got the silkiest and most tender chicken we've probably ever had. And the rice was so fragrant, infused with chicken broth and ginger. For me, their house-made hot sauce really put the dish over the top. The next stall with the longest line that we tried served Chinese roast meats over dry wonton noodles. We ordered their mixed meat noodle plate, which included crispy roast pork, cha siu, and duck over a bed of wonton noodles with this thick, sweet soy sauce drizzled all over. This dish was one of my favorites during our trip and it was super cheap. With room still in our stomachs, we visited one more food stall to try their pork cutlet over egg fried rice. This dish also came with a side of soup. Wasn't as good as our first two dishes, but you can't beat the price. We ended our first Hawker Center experience with some fresh coconut juice. Since we were there just in time before Lunar New Year, Chinatown looked especially festive, celebrating the Year of the Dragon with shops selling all kinds of New Year decorations. This unsuspecting ice cream shop advertising their $1 ice cream cone surpassed all my expectations. I'm not sure if it was because it was hot and we've been walking around for a while, but it was arguably the best ice cream I've ever had. A definite must try. We made our way to Clark Key, which is known for its nightclubs and restaurants. Our final destination for the night was Jumbo Seafood at the Riverwalk location to try Singapore's famous chili crab. We ordered one of their signature sets that came with seafood donut tossed in salad cream, de-shelled prawns fried with cereal, asparagus stir-fried with fresh mushrooms in oyster sauce, yangzhou fried rice, chilled lime jelly with peach resin, and of course, the award-winning chili mud crab with deep-fried mini buns to dip into the savory tomato-based sauce. This was by far the most expensive meal that we had on our Asia trip but we just couldn't resist. Thanks for watching and come with us to Gardens by the Bay next time.